Pam Hendo, and this is a tutorial for making Dark Magician Girl's wand, but you can also think of this as a cosplay tutorial for working with pink insulation foam and styrofoam. Chapters are timestamped and all materials are listed below. Let's do this. So the most difficult part by far is the spiral, and here's what we're working with. This is two pieces of pink insulation foam glued together with 3M Super 77 spray-on glue. Be careful about the type of adhesive you use. Uh, something like Barge is gonna eat right through that pink insulation foam and a lot of others will take an eternity to air dry. I usually glue two whole sheets together and then you know, just use what I need for the project and have more ready to go when I need it for something else. I made this pattern just to make sure that the spiral matches on both sides. To carve the spiral, I'm starting with a groove cut along that line. Basically, this just means cutting at a 45 degree angle on one side of the line and 45 degrees on the other side of the line so that it creates this sort of groove cut right along there. This stuff is so lightweight and it's really easy to carve, so it's perfect for really uniquely shaped details. I'm using a snap blade razor for this and it cuts through very easily. If you have a sharpening stick around, it helps to keep that nearby because you can sharpen up your razor in between cuts and then you're never really losing time struggling with like carving it. From here, you can smooth out the edges of the groove cut by just sort of shaving it down or sanding it down. Now that the general shape of my spiral is cut, I'm gonna go ahead and mark where the foam dowel will insert. I could have done this part before the two sheets were glued together, but I honestly think that this is easier. I traced around the circumference of the dowel and I'm just carving it out so this thing will fit in. I want it to fit in at least an inch or a few centimeters or so. Now I'm gonna go back and refine that spiral shape. It's a bit easy to lose track of what you're doing, so I recommend making a pretty distinct line with a marker of where you want that spiral to come to a point and then you just shave and sand it down on either side of that marked point. Once you're happy with the shape, use a fine grit sanding block to smooth the whole thing down. This is getting covered with Warbla, so it's not the most make or break to have it completely smooth, but the Warbla will show like an uneven surface a little bit, so smooth it down as much as you can. To help with this, I'm using lightweight spackle to make it even more smooth. Pink insulation foam chips away kind of easily, so you're bound to have a couple of imperfections to fill. This silicone spreader also makes it very easy to get a smooth and level surface. I let it dry overnight, and this pink will actually turn to white as it's completely dry. And after that, you can sand it a bit more if you need to. We'll come back to this because this isn't the only thing I'm gonna wrap in Warbla. Dark Magician Girl's wand has these cone-shaped sections, and I think that's gonna be the easiest for me to accomplish out of craft foam. I've made this like vague rainbow shape, and that's going to meet together to form a cone, and the top of it should match the circumference of my dowel. I also want to fill in this gap between the bottom of the cone and the dowel, and I'm just gonna make these ring shapes also out of craft foam. You really only need to worry about carefully cutting the inner hole of the ring, because that's gonna fit to the dowel. The outer edge you can actually just sort of loosely cut. Um, I'm going to first glue that to the bottom of the cone and then cut around it to make that edge flush. I think that's a little easier than like lining up each ring and hoping that you sized it perfectly. The wand really only needs two of these cones, but I've made three just because I tend to do that with simple stuff. Um, and then I'm just gonna use the two that I like best or that I think turned out the best for the actual project. And I'm sanding it a little bit just to make sure that the bottom of the cone is really flush with that ring attachment. And that's just gonna make it look super clean. This little ball at the bottom annoyed the heck out of me. I tried a lot of different things because I just didn't want to do the extra work. I thought maybe I could just like add a curtain rod end to it and just like drill that into the bottom, but I couldn't find the right size and I didn't want the extra weight on the wand. I tried to just find a spherical shape that I could glue to the bottom, but it's really not gonna be durable unless that wooden dowel can actually insert into the sphere. I tried using foam clay, but uh, it's really hard to get it to dry all the way through and it's surprisingly difficult to get it to be like completely even and spherical. So here is a styrofoam ball. It's kind of a risky material to work with because it gets dented super easily and it gets absolutely melted by heat. I've traced around my dowel and I'm carving a hole into this little ball to make sure my dowel can fit in at least an inch or a few centimeters down. This looks pretty good and I probably shouldn't have been such a baby about it. I just really don't like styrofoam or that squeaky noise that it makes while you're cutting it. But it has served me well here. 
And now I'm going to warble around both this part and the spiral pink insulation foam tip from before. I have two sheets of warbler a couple inches bigger than the size of the actual wand tip. You're gonna lose a little bit of that spacing to the round shape and also the spiral grouping. I'm warming up one of the warbler sheets, making sure that my pink insulation foam is far away from the heat gun because it really likes to melt under heat. When the warbler is warm and soft enough, lay it on top of the spiral and push it into that spirally groove. Make sure that you work slow enough to not create a tear in the warbler. I'm trimming off some of the warbler excess, but leaving enough so that it'll be easy for me to pinch it to the other layer of warbler. Keep working on the spiral and then you can move to rounding out the edges. So now we're gonna turn this over and do the other half and you wanna set it aside again while you're heating up the other piece of black warbler. And same thing, once your sheet is heated up, you can go ahead and lay that on top of the other half of the spiral, push it into the grooves, then work on the sides. To make the two halves meet, I like to really pinch the two pieces of warbler together, trying to push it as close to the pink styrofoam base underneath as possible. And again, you wanna work slowly enough that you're not creating any tears. If you do get a tear, try and patch it up up with more black warbler. You really don't want a hole in this because like I said, the pink insulation foam will shrink really, really easily. So any holes are gonna cause it to shrink up when you heat it again later. I'm using a popsicle stick to smooth out the sides of this groove for the spiral. And this is where you're gonna be so happy that you filled the gaps because this part is pretty easy now. Oh, and also do be careful about accidentally heating this bottom part where the dowel is gonna insert. I didn't have much trouble with it anyway, but you can always tape it off or stuff some cotton in there if you're worried about it. And this exposed part will be covered in a foam dowel trim later on. Now we're gonna warble wrap that styrofoam sphere. I think using two sheets will create the most smooth like encasing for the styrofoam. If you try to use just one piece, it'll tend to like create these wrinkles and folds that are just really hard to smooth out later. I can't really leave the styrofoam exposed because you actually will see these slight like hexagons where the little styrofoam balls meet. And also the gold spray paint I'm gonna use would probably melt this. Plus styrofoam's just really prone to like cuts and dents. So the warble is gonna help make it a lot more durable. Finally, I'm adding prism foam dowels to create these little details on the wand and that's just glued on with large contact cement. I gotta say, this is looking pretty clean and tidy and I'm very happy with it. It's still super lightweight. Moving on to sealing and painting, I have sealed this whole thing with black spray-on plastic dip. Uh, the foam details need to be sealed and it doesn't really hurt the warbler to be covered in plastic dip, so I just did the whole thing. And honestly, it kind of worked in my favor because it helps smooth out the warbler a bit. Uh, I thought I clicked the record button when I was filming primering the whole thing and doing the gold spray paint, but I guess I didn't. But I just used a chrome gold spray paint and am pleasantly surprised with how good that turned out. Then I taped off those gold parts and just sprayed the whole like rod blue. And I'm gonna use pink acrylic paint to paint the trim, or I guess not trim, I to paint the little details. You could also tape off the blue parts and just spray paint the little detailed things pink, but I think that they're so small it's easier to just hand paint it. I also want to add dimension, but not necessarily weathering, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of black acrylic paint to the edges of all these details to create some shading and contrast. If you wanna take this to the next level, you can also spray the whole thing in a clear coat. That's also gonna make it a bit more durable and easy to clean. Uh, but it takes a few days to like fully dry and get rid of the smell, and I didn't have that long, so I didn't do that stuff. But here's how the final wand turned out. And that's it for the Stark Magician Girl wand tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed watching. I also have another video for the full cosplay and just the hat if you wanna check those out too. Also, I've recently moved to Norway and my favorite thing to work with is foam and I've always used Plastic Dip to seal that, but that doesn't seem to be available here. So if any cosplayers in Europe know of a good sealant that I could use, especially a spray on one, because I just kind of prefer that, please let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for being here and until next time, stay crafty.